Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay, Nur Chuck, and this is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program, and we have a showdown, my friends, here live at Quest Field in Seattle, a little preview to an actual Jet Seahawks game that hopefully we'll be making our way to this year, and we have the New York Rieslings, yay, Jet style, versus the Washington State Rieslings. Boo, Seahawks style. I'm honored to be here. Uh, big shout out to the Washington Commission for getting me onto the field area. They got new turf, so we wanted to be on the field, which brings out a huge shout out. If you have the ability or the connections to get me onto a football stadium, I have decided I am gonna tape the Thunder Show from every football stadium in the US. So, hit me up, Mott. Link it up, baby. We're gonna go on tour. We're gonna hit them all. We're gonna hit them all, Mott. And uh, so, if you got that connection, you want me to come and hang out with you like so many of you do, well then just get me onto the field of the football stadium in your town and we'll be friends forever. And speaking of friends forever, we're gonna give some shout outs. First to Marlena Duffy from her boyfriend or husband, Michael, I'm not even sure, sorry about that. She just passed her sommelier exams in Hamburg, Germany. Big shout out to Marlena. I'm really pumped to be Casey Kasin. You know, we've gone from the birthdays, guys, to a whole nother thing, like Chris Hanley is sending a big shout out to Elizabeth, uh, who has got mono. Yeah, and uh, she's in grad school, and she's moved. It's a whole mess of a situation. So I want to give her a huge shout out, because she shares the name of my wife and my sister. Big shout out to Elizabeth. And finally, Rob Pitkin. Big shout out for him. This guy quit his bio lab job to become a winemaker. That's passion, my friends. He went to Cape Breton intern, now he's in Morton in New Zealand. He'll be back in Boston soon. Boo Patriots. And uh, I'm really happy to give everybody a shout out. I'm really happy to be here. Um, we can uh, get very excited about these six Rieslings. Uh, I'm very passionate about Riesling as a whole. A lot of you know what I think of the Alsatian and German Rieslings. The Austrians, big shout out to Prager, Prager my man. Uh, big fan of his. We've got six showdown Rieslings here now. We've got a spit bucket. I like how the hometown guys gave me a pink, pink <laughs> Jets bucket. Nice job on that. It's still not gonna phase me. And we're gonna call it, even though I'm a huge Jets fan, clearly wearing my Kellen Clemens jersey. He's a Northwest boy. Um, I hear that the home team is a good eight and a half point favorite. That's right. I like how the home team brought out the 19, 22, and 24 dollar wines against our 14, 15, and 16 dollar versions from New York. I'm just saying. All right, let's get into the wines. First showdown is the Herman J. Weimer Riesling Semi Dry 2006, 16 bones. Uh, we've talked about uh, Herman before. This is probably our best shot for a victory here. This guy produces really, really good Riesling, and he, we will match that up against the OS Winery Riesling Champagne Vineyard 2007. Now these are not specific matchups against each other. Oh, sorry, Mont. I know you got to do three second rule now, right? That's right. He's complaining back home. Having a great time in Seattle. By the way, big, big Vaniac party last night. Big shout out to CW and everybody else. Cam and you know Seattle storage facility for hosting us. It was awesome. Uh, big, big shout out. So, first of all, nice and windy here, uh, but nothing like the uh, winter episode we did in Northeaster. So we can handle it. 16, 19 bones. We'll start with the Herman J. Wiener. Uh, let's give it a little bit of a. Say it with me, a sniffy sniff. Great fruit on the nose. Oh, there you go. Uh, a little bit of a honeycomb cereal kind of component on the nose, which I'm liking a lot. Uh, a little bit of apple. We're gonna pour a little bit for all the jet bands that couldn't be here with us. You know, I gotta pour a little bit out for them. A little more in a sniffy sniff. A little steely, flinty action. Let's give it a whirl. Nice golden apple component. Little hint of residual sugar, but very clean, very crisp. Great backbone dryness on the back end. Really solid effort. Again, I continue to be very impressed with Weimer's cleansiness. You know, it's just a clean little, little mix of apple and bluestone on the back end. Very pleasant. This is the semi-dry, right? Let's make sure. That has a little hint of sweetness, which is a great transition wine for a lot of people that are looking to get away from maybe white Zinfandel or the sweet wines, trying to get somewhere to a little bit more of the hint of dryness. Very clean. Let's see what's going on over here with Rob Sullivan's OS. Snippy snip. 
very peachy, which is nice. Nice peaches. Little hits of like graininess, so almost like a peachy grainy component. Again, looks like a cereal you buy in Whole Foods for like nine bucks for a small box and you're like, I think you're doing a good job but it's just marketing, my friends. Good stuff, let's give it a whirl. The train with all the maniacs over here. <laughs> they know the Thunder Show's here. The Thunder Show. Big shout out from the train guys. Anyway, wherever that train is. Anyway, very, also very solid. I mean, good start to the show. Maybe I'm just freezing my butt off out here, but I'm really liking these wines so far. Um, this is also very clean and crisp. Obviously not as sweet as the last wine. Great apple component on the back end. Almost like pear skin coming on here. Great thing to do is try pear skin compared to the actual pear. It's a very interesting quality. I find a lot of different wines, and I think you'll enjoy uh, learning that aspect. I find a lot of pear skin in this wine, a little bit of like a citrus component. Well made. Both these wines are a solid start. I'm having a little fun. I'm gonna hold my scores to the end. Let's move on. Do a little rinse, little rinse. The next flight is going to be the Dr. Frank 2006 Dry Reason from the Finger Lakes, 12% alcohol, 15 US dollars. I think Seneca Wallace wears number 15 for the Seahawks. Is that right? Me. Can you wrong about that? Anyway, and from the home team, the Poets Leap 2006 from Columbia Valley, rolling in at 22 US dollars. Awesome. And let's taste them off. Let's see what's going on here. Lock myself, Ma. Like that? Okay. Whoa. Let's get first into the Dr. Frank. A little sniffy sniff. Nice steeliness on this one. Um, wow. Very, very, very stony in its approach. A little ocean stone. You know, like the you know, ocean's like hitting against those rocks and you get a little bit of moss. <laughs> very clean, almost like a clamshell component. Um, break down the shattered clamshells. I get it. Very nice. Let's see what's going on over here on the Poets Leap. This is interesting. This is a, a little bit more old world on the nose than I expected. This is nice. This has some real complexities on the nose. Almost like a salt water component. We got the, we got the people cleaning the field. We got the wind. And now they bring a train, Mott, how are we supposed to do this show? Uh, beautiful though, I'm really, almost like a weird mustard aftertaste on the nose. This is, oh no, 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 let me take that back. Horseradish, so I'm going with a very horseradish tail end on the nose, very nice. All right, let's taste the Dr. Frank. Very dry. Is that a plane? And a I mean, plane. you know, I mean, can we get a boat in this place? A blimp. Well, we need some blimp. Um, this Dr. Frank is a little bit awkward, a little bit backwards. It's got a little bit of a, a little bit more of an old world complexity to it, but almost tastes like a cheap Alsatian. Uh, he's like, it's a cool scene back here, am um, I? I don't know, not my cup of tea. A little awkward, a little disjointed, unfocused. Mm. You know, it's mm, you gotta call it like you see it. So I'm not really feeling the Dr. Frank. It's it's lacking a lot of the uh, charisma I'm looking for. The acidity is not even that strong. It's just kind of flabby, for lack of a better word. Let's see what the poet sleep is doing. Again, really enjoying this. You know, salt watery horseradish component of the nose. I just have to smell it. I'm stolen because I like smelling this wine. <laughs> Kill that train. Let's give it a whirl. They, they ripped this up. Now, 12.9 alcohol seems a little bit higher on my palate, but the acidity is ripping my palate. They brought out the switchblade and they're cutting my palate. 
right down the middle, and that's what I'm talking about. I like that. I like that this wine can match up with an enormous amount of foods because of its beautiful backbone and acidity. Ripping. I really like the complexity of this wine. Um, I'm getting stone fruit, a uh, little star fruit as well, which I'm enjoying quite a bit. I just can't get over the complexity of the, um, I'm gonna go with horse radish covered clams. I mean, that's, that's really where it's coming from. It's a very intense flavor and it's really, really darn good actually. Uh, I'm really feeling this effort. 22 bones, fair enough price for a top German or Alsatian wine, actually probably even cheaper a top German Alsatian reason. This poet's leap is bringing the thunder and has definitely leaped ahead of the pack of this bunch. Definitely the best of these Jets and Seahawks. Kind of like Namath would be the best of all the Jets and Seahawks. Sorry, Steve Largent. Sorry, I know you're a big fan. Sorry. Let's move on. And finally, as we get what's over here, what's over here. What we have here is Shield Rock Point 2006 Dry Riesling, 14 US dollars. This little package, I don't have these guys wise yet. Um, this guy's rolling in from where? The Finger Lakes as well. And probably the most famous of the bunch, the Chateau Saint Michel in Roca 2006, the joint venture with Dr. Roos from Germany. This wine rolls in, suggested 24 bucks. I have a feeling you're selling it for a lot less, but we'll have to look at that when we get back home. Uh, let's see what's going on here. This. And this. Six wines. And this cold place breeze. For that mop, don't blame it on you. <laughs> uh, Show Rick, let's see what's going on with these guys. Nice color, sniffy sniff. <laughs> Little petrol-y kind of peachy thing going on on the nose, not too bad. Kind of liking it, um, kind of not, right? Like 50 50. Seems pretty basic. Look at the cheese on the nose. A little Parmesan action going on here, so that's fine. Always a fan of that. Let's give it a whirl. Very dry in comparison to the other New Yorkers. It doesn't have a pleasant flavor profile, and that's a problem. Let's start with that. It is dry. It has got some nice acidity. It's clearly basic Granny Smith apple flavors. That's about it. This wine is a one trick pony and the trick is not that impressive. I'm gonna give this wine a major pass and unfortunately, New York is struggling. Now let's see what's going on with Europa. Sniffy sniff. This wine is aromatically challenged, unfortunately. Not much going on in those. There's a little hint of apple coming through. Um, not getting much more. Really, really basic nose. Let's give it a whirl. This also has um, a little bit of a petrol kind of little hint. Much more subtle than your norm on a reason though. Um, Granny Smith apple, little, little hint of like a kiwi component on the mid palate, which I kind of like, made it a little bit more interesting. I like the weight of this wine. It's got good mouthfeel presence, but I'm gonna be honest with you, it's kind of meh. It's very, very like average. It's like the kid that sat behind you at home for four years and he didn't know his name. That's kind of the wine that this is acting as. Boring. Good acidity, solid textbook, but you can find this stuff for 12 bones. Let me put these wines in order for you. And we're gonna obviously give the huge victory and dominant victory to the poet's leap. I'm gonna score this wine 92 points. It completely rocked me. Oh, I like the echo I'm getting from the bottle. Sorry. Anyway, 92 points of this wine. 
an absolute must try if you're drinking crisp white wines and you're looking for a food wine, it completely blew me away. In second place, crap, another Seahawk, uh, the OS Winery. I'm gonna go 89 points in this wine, 17 bones, solid stuff. You know, I think a lot of people would like it. Uh, there's some people that like it even more than I would, I think. Again, very comfortable with you going out and finding this wine and trying it. A great Riesling experience. Number three will have a New York appearance. Again, the Weimer, uh, you know, really nice semi-dry Riesling. Did a great job. This guy is great. We, come on, we have to go and check this guy out. It's like an hour drive. Come to Seattle, we don't go and check this guy out. We gotta do that. Um, we really like his wines in the show. I'm gonna go 89 points on that as well. Really solid stuff. Uh, really happy with it. I'm gonna go 87 points on the Eroka. It's okay. I mean, for the price point, I would probably say a pass. And then unfortunately, we're gonna go uh, 85 points on Dr. Frank, also a pass. And we're gonna go 80 points. Big shout out to Wayne Corbett, who wore number 80 proudly for a long time uh, for the uh, show break. And uh, really good show. Awesome to be here, like super, super pumped. Big question of the day. Have you been to Seattle or Washington State? And if you've had, what is your favorite part of it? It's a great, great town. Looking forward to coming back here and beating the crap out of the Seahawks because you, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not. Mott. That should say green thunder, not blue thunder.